everyone is afraid of rejection. Don't let these self-help gurus tell you otherwise. So let's talk about why all humans are afraid of rejection, why it paralyzes us, and how can we embrace rejection instead of running away from it? We all know what rejection is. We've all, sometime in our life, have been rejected. Maybe our girlfriend broke up with us. Maybe we went on a date and they ghosted us. Maybe we went on a job interview and we realized they never called us back after that interview. All these examples of rejection, they make us feel hurt. We can feel a deep sense of pain, vulnerable, exposed, sad, embarrassed, broken, worthless. And sometimes we can even feel these physical manifestations. A study was done by Columbia University and it showed that being rejected actually lit up parts of the brain that lights up only when there's pain, physical pain. So when you're rejected and it's painful, just know it's not in your head, it's real. In this modern world, being able to be rejected many times, it's actually a good thing. You're looking to marry somebody, find that person you love for the rest of your life. Back in the days, you would look for somebody in your community, in your small community. Now, due to the modern world, technology, social media, you have access to millions if not billions of people. So how will you find that person? How will you find your soulmate, the person you love? By going on different dates with different people, them rejecting you and you rejecting them. It will take being rejected and rejecting for you to find the right person. You may want to make money through social media, but you would have to expose yourself, expose the way you look, expose your voice. People can give you some nasty comments. They may not like the way you look. They may not like the way you sound. They may not like the way you teach things or explain things, but the ones successful on social media are those that can endure and embrace the rejection. And anytime you're rejected now, it may bring you back to that childhood trauma. You may feel like that little kid, but we have to look at the way we are wired. We were wired and made to thrive and survive in these small tribes, in these small groups, in a small community. And what is this wiring called? This wiring is called our nervous system and our primal brain. So when we're rejected, our nervous system and our primal brain thinks that we are in danger, danger, danger. Your nervous system may even give you pain in your body to alert you that something is wrong so it can change your behavior, so you can go along and pass on your genes for the future. So our brain creates this emotion of fear, fear of being rejected. We tend to take these things very personal. We believe this person or these people are rejecting us. We internalize this rejection. This means our self-esteem, what we feel about our worthiness takes a hit. Time out, time out, time out. Hold the phone, wait a minute, let's look at what is truth. Understanding some facts and seeing what is truth will provide us with some clarity. Why do people reject us? If you're on a date and that person says, I don't like you, I don't wanna date you anymore, why are they rejecting you? They are rejecting you based on their standards, their values, their beliefs, their fears, their perspective, their goals, their desires. So this means that being rejected really has nothing to do with you. It has more to do with the person doing the rejecting. Have you ever gone to a shoe store? Maybe you want to start running. So you look for some running sneakers, you know your size, you look for this new brand, you pick the box up, you put on the shoe. But while putting on the shoe, you notice that it's way too tight. Something is wrong. You take off the shoe, you look under the tongue, and you confirm it is your size. You have the correct size. So you take that shoe, put it back in the box, put it back on the shelf, and you look for a bigger size. You just rejected that shoe. That shoe and your feet were not aligned correctly. I want you to reframe the way you see rejection. Rejection occurs when there isn't an alignment. So when someone rejects you, see it as that person does not align with my values, my beliefs, and my perspective. If someone rejects you, see it as a blessing in disguise. Anytime you sense some sort of rejection, think this to yourself. Rejection is redirection. Rejection means there isn't an alignment. It means that there is a misalignment. What happens when you continue with misalignment? Well, let me share with you two personal examples of rejections that I've gone through. One was that when I was younger, I was dating this girl and I thought she was the love of my life. I thought I was gonna marry her. I thought me and her were soulmates. But out of the blue, she breaks up with me. My heart was crushed. I had a stomachache that wouldn't go away. I lost all my appetite. I was in shock. I felt so hurt. I thought something was wrong with me. I thought, what, what did I do wrong? Was I not good enough for her? And I felt that way. But after several years passed by, I reflected on who this person really was. And I realized that this person's qualities did not align with my qualities. Their beliefs did not align with my beliefs. Their standards did not align with my standards. Me and this person just didn't want the same things. There was a misalignment. And until this day, I'm extremely grateful that she did reject me because I found somebody 
that did align with me. Rejection is redirection. The second example is I was recently rejected from a college program. And to be honest with you, when I got the rejection letter, my heart rejoiced. I felt relieved. I knew in my heart, I didn't want to do this. Rejection is redirection. But what happens when we fear rejection? When we fear it so much that we try our best to avoid being rejected. Rejected by our parents, our spouses, our mates, our friends, our colleagues, our community, our society. What happens when we try to please all those around us? When we seek their approval, we end up neglecting ourselves. We end up rejecting ourselves. We start becoming or even creating a life that's that's not really ours. We start becoming or creating a life for someone else. When you ignore, neglect, shut out, darken your true desires just to please those around you, you do a disservice to yourself and to the world around you. Which doctor do you think would give better care? One who does it wholeheartedly because they really want to do it or someone who wants to work in technology? Stop ignoring yourself. Stop ignoring your emotions, your thoughts, your values, your beliefs. You are not your friends. You are not your parents. You are not your colleagues. You are someone different. Embrace that. Fight for the approval of yourself. Sometimes we could think that when we neglect and reject ourselves and please those around us, that somehow we are safe, that we believe in our minds that we're taking the safe path. But in reality, you're rejecting who you are inside. And you tell every cell in your body that what you think and what you feel is not important. And what other people think is more important than you. Fight for the approval of yourself. We may be afraid of making mistakes and failing and having those people around us tell us, I told you so. This is your life, your life, not theirs. You only get one chance at this life. Before you know it, you'll be 80, 90, 100 years old. And you will either be proud of the younger version of yourself, proud for having the courage to stand up for your beliefs and your values, or you'll be sad and disappointed in the younger version of yourself for neglecting all of your desires, your dreams, your passions. So how do you fight for the approval of yourself? How do we fear rejection of ourselves more than the rejection of those around us? We do the work. Yep, you heard it right. It's gonna take some work, so we do the work. First, we reframe. Remind yourself, rejection means misalignment. So whenever you're rejected, just understand that this means that your values and their values do not match. You never get upset when a shoe size doesn't fit on you. You just put it down and you get another size. Life is the same way. This rejection thing is great. The more times you get rejected, the closer you get to achieving your real goal. Rejection is redirection. This doesn't mean that you are selfish, evil, you're trying to conquer the world. But if you don't prioritize yourself, no one else would do it. You need to be able to take care of your own emotional needs before you can help and support those around you. Remember, on an airplane, when the oxygen masks drop, what do you do? They tell you, put on your mask first before trying to help anybody else. You are no use if you faint and are unconscious. It's the same way emotionally. Third, get uncomfortable. How? By disappointing others. Is that plain and simple? The best way to get over rejection is by getting rejected. Take that plunge. If you feel like this is the path in your heart and those around you are telling you that's not it, listen to your heart, listen to your gut, listen to your intuition because you are important. Repeat to yourself over and over again, write it down in a journal over and over again. Being rejected by them means I am being approved by me and the opinion of myself is more important than the opinion of those around me. So when you disappoint those around you or you get rejected by them, just understand, you're gonna feel anxious, you may feel jittery, you may feel nervous and a little bit scared. That's normal. Your nervous system is kicking in to try to protect you. It thinks you're in danger. Don't be afraid of these sensations. Smile and start taking some slow, deep breaths. You can use your biology to remind your nervous system that you're safe, that being rejected doesn't mean dangerous. Fourth, imagine you are 80 years old. When you look back into your life, do you regret the life you lived because it wasn't a life that you really wanted to live? Maybe it was a life that your parents, your spouse, your mates, your colleagues, your society, your community wanted for you, but it's not something you deep down wanted for yourself because you never had the courage to fight for your own approval, for your own desires, for your own life. There's this beautiful quote from Sahil Bloom, and he says, make decisions that your 80 year old self would be proud of. If you're still watching this, I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm here to remind you that you only have one life. Life's not easy, but it's worth it. There are more ups and downs on this roller coaster called life, but smile because one day this ride called life will end. Be courageous to disappoint those around you. Fight to have the approval of yourself. The world is a better place when you're happy, joyful, unique, being yourself, doing what lights you up. Don't forget to give me thumbs up to show me some support. 
And if you love this video, then you're definitely gonna love one of these.